الحمد لله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما الحمد لله الله سبحانه وتعالى revealed his book القرآن and in this book are many messages and yet there's one central message which is that Allah سبحانه وتعالى is one and that his creation should enter into a covenant with him freely and worship him. But one of the most important things uh, that the Qur'an does for a believer is that the Qur'an essentially gives us uh, a an entire understanding of not only ourselves, but of the world around us. And so within the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really a... a an explanation of why we're here, where we came from, what what we should do while we're here, and then where we're going. One of the most important uh, realities that the Quran explains to us is that the nature of the abode that we're in is an abode of tribulation. Daru bala. This is an abode of trials and tribulations. And this is the the Quran is rife with verses that remind us of this fact. And so one of these verses in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he He is the one who خَلَقَ الْمَوْتُ وَالْحَيَاتَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ He created life and death and he created life in order to test you. And then he says that to, to see which one of you is the best in actions. أَيُكُمْ أَحْسَنُ amala, Which of you is the best in in actions. And then also uh, another text um, that was in Surah al mulk In Surah al naml Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Sulaiman, who was given an immense uh, dominion, uh, actually says about what he was given, هَذَا مِنْ فَضْرِ رَبِّي لِيَبْلُوَنِي أَشْكُرْ أَمْ أَكْفُرْ That do I أَشْكُرُ أَمْ أَكْفُرُ You know, do I, am I grateful or am I an ingrate? Do I have ingratitude? And here kufr means uh, to be ungrateful because that's the fundamental meaning of the word. And whoever is grateful is grateful f- really for, for the benefit of his own soul. And then he says, and whoever is ungrateful, then verily my Lord is independent and and karim, uh, which one of these words in Arabic that has many different meanings, but generous and noble, exalted. So my Lord is ghaniyun, is rich without need, and karim, uh, generous with uh, his riches. So this is what Suleiman says. What's important here is that what Suleiman is essentially telling us is that tribulation is not just a negative aspect of life, which a lot of people think, oh, I'm going through a lot of trials and tribulations. This is a reminder that tribulation is also blessing, that blessings are tribulations. So depending on whether you're grateful or not, because a lot of people are pure ingrates with their blessings. And one of the remarkable things about our time is that people are just filled with ingratitude. Even though there's so many blessings, like people use, there are places where people are definitely suffering uh, considerably. But for many, many people, especially here in the U.S., and and I know there's other people uh, listening that are in places like Malaysia or Europe or uh, many places where there's just immense blessings. So the the two fundamental blessings that if you have them, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala expects you to worship him. If you're lacking one or both of these two blessings, you might have some excuses. But when you have these two blessings, you have no excuse uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those are security and freedom from hunger. This is the fundamental thing in Surah Quraysh when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the ilafi Quraysh ilafi mrahlat ash-shita'i wa sayf fal ya'budu rabb hadha al-bayt let them worship the lord of this house why because he has secured you amanahum min khawf right he has secured you from any fear so you're in a state of security at'amuhum min ju'in wa amanahum min khawf he has given you uh, 
uh, food, so he's given you satiety from your hunger, and he has uh, given you security from any uh, fear. So those are the two blessings that Allah is saying warrant the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that, you know, in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the, 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 the fundamental ones are the physiological needs, he calls them. But actually the Prophet Sallallahu I think, uh, has a better hierarchy of needs than Maslow. And of course he does. I mean, I, I, it's, I don't think, I know. Uh, because the Prophet ﷺ actually put, when, the first khutbah that he gave when he went into Medina was, he said that, Ya um, Yuhannas, Afshu Salam, like spread peace. In other words, create security in your societies. And in Sahih al Bukhari, one of the three hallmarks of faith is the third one is, Bedru Salam lil Alam. Spreading global peace, spreading peace around the world. So the, the Muslims are, we are supposed to be spreaders of peace, right? global peace. So that peace is, is what the Prophet ﷺ told us to spread. And then he said, Afshu salam bainakum. And then he said, Wa ta'imu ta'am. And feed the hungry. So there you have security at the very bottom of the pyramid, and then the next are the physiological needs. Because if, if, if you're about to have your lunch and, and a bear or a lion shows up, you're going to forget your lunch. Security is the fundamental need before the physiological needs. You need security. And then he says, well, silul arham. And then maintain kinship bonds because family is the foundation of a society so you're moving up in this hierarchy and then he said and then pray in the night when people are asleep so now you have to work on yourself because everything the hierarchy is there your securities are taken care of your food's taken care of you have family now work on yourself and get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he says so it begins with peace and it ends with peace. Then he said, you will enter paradise in peace. And, and Salman al-Farisi, the Prophet ﷺ, told him that no one will enter paradise without a passport. And he literally used the word jawaz in the hadith. لا يدخل الجنة أحد إلا بجواز من الله مكتوب فيه أدخلوها بالسلام آمنين In other words, دعه يمر like just uh, laissez-faire, let him pass. So here in dunya, you have all these boundaries. They're in the akhirah as well. J Jannah has a border patrol. So you're not going to get into paradise without a passport, with a visa from Allah. But that visa is a, is, it's, it's a, a permanent, you know, they call it like permanent residence visa. You'll have iqama da'ima, right? And, and you become a citizen uh, in parallel. That's in the hadith. So it's really quite extraordinary. But one of the things, so you've got that side of the dunya, which this is the half of the world that we're in, where people, I feel, are just total, like so many people, I hear people whining all the time about how horrible things are. They don't know how horrible. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm somewhat of a historian. I've, I've read a lot of history. You know, my, uh, my, my, I have a degree in history, but, you know, so... My reading of history, like, don't complain because you have no idea what, what, like, what has happened in the past in history. It's terrifying what's happened, like what people have gone through, the hunger they've suffered. I mean, our Prophet Sallallahu suffered immensely, but yet he never complained. Show me anywhere where he complains. The only complaint the Prophets give is to Allah. They don't complain to anybody else. There's nowhere where he complains, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because they understood everything. So now why didn't they complain? That's the important thing. And this is what the Qur'an teaches us, why they didn't complain. And, 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 and here's the reason. In the hikam of Ibn Atayla, he says, and this is in the 104th hikam, and this is one of the most important uh, books that um, was written in, in, in our tradition, in the science of Ihsan, recognized by all of our scholars. It's commented on by so many people. One of the great Maliki scholars, Ahmed Zarruq, has over 25 commentaries on it. Some say up to 32. And, and 
he would finish commenting on it and he would start a new commentary because he was getting new insights into these things. And Faqih al-Banani said, if it was permitted to read uh, other than the Quran in prayer, it would have been permitted with the hikam of Ibn Atayla. I mean, that's hyperbole, obviously. But the point he was making was, this is, is such a stunning uh, book with insights. So one of the things that he says Qara radiallahu anhu ibn Atayla, mafkhara of the uh, of the uh, of the Egyptian people that he he was born and raised in Egypt. In fact, some say because the hadith, the famous hadith, there's a hadith, and may Allah give succor to um, our our brothers and sisters and uh, sons and daughters in Yemen uh, who, who are just going through immense trials and tribulations. Um, but Ibn Atayla was originally from Azd which is a Yemeni clan. And so when the Prophet ﷺ said that uh, Al-Imanu Yamani, uh, some of the scholars said he was referring to Abul Hassan, who was from the Bani Ash'ar, who, who were a Yemeni tribe. And then uh, when, when he said, Wal fiqhu Yamani, and jurisprudence is Yemeni, he was referring to Imam Madik, who was from Dhu Asbah, which is another Yemeni tribe. And then when he said, Wal hikmatu Yamani, and wisdom is is Yemeni as well. They say he was referring to uh, Ibn Atayla because he was also Yemeni uh, from the Azd. And there's Azd az al-Kabir and Azd al-Saghir, there's different um, people from that. But it's one of the great tribes of the Arabs or clans. So anyway, Ibn Atayla uh, says, لِيُخَفِّفْ أَلَمَ الْبَلَاءِ عَنْكَ عِلْمُكَ بِأَنَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ هُوَ الْمُبْتَرِ لَكَ in order to diminish the pain of your tribulation, he has given you knowledge, glory be to him, that he is the one trying you. So once you know that, that diminishes the weight of the tribulation. And this is what our Prophet ﷺ knew, and this is why at the lowest point of his life, which is Ta'if, he does that remarkable dua at Ta'if, that as long as you're not upset with me, I'm fine with what's come to me, as long as you're not upset with me. And, and this, is, this is from the book of Allah, when the Prophet was commanded, وَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ فَإِنَّكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا In Surah at tur Be patient with the hukm of your Lord, with this decree of your Lord. Because you are in our providential care. Like be you, you're in our in our care here. The ayun the ulama say it's inaya, right? Which is related in the etymology, the greater etymology to ain, right? So uh, so then he says, Faladi wa jahatka minhu al aqdar huwaladi awadika husna lichtiyar. So the one who sends these trials and tribulations that you hate, he is also the one who has accustomed you to things that you love. And so he says, بِمَا تُحِبُّهُ فَشْكُرْهُ عَلَى مَا أَوْلَاكَ This is Ahmed Zarruq. وَاسْبِرْ لَهُ فِي مَا بِهِ تَوَلَّاكَ So be grateful with the things you love from Allah and be patient with those things that Allah has sent you that are difficult. And this is why in فِي ذَارِكَ الْآيَاتِ نِكُلِّ صَبَارٍ شَكُورٍ This Quran are signs for people that are constantly patient and constantly grateful. You have to be one or the other in any given circumstance. If it's a trial, be patient. If it's a blessing, which is also a trial, then the response is gratitude. Those are the, those are the responses. Uh, Ibn Atayla said he had an immense weight on his shoulder, and he was just really troubled. And he went to uh, his sheikh, Abu Abbas al-Mursi in Egypt. In, uh, uh, he was from Alexandria. And he went into him and he told him, Every human being is in one of four conditions, and each of those conditions has an appropriate response. You're either in blessing, and the response is gratitude. You're in tribulation, and the response is patient. You're in obedience, and the response is to witness God's tawfiq, his, that he's given you this success, shuhud al-minna, to see the blessing of obedience from God. Or you're in disobedience, and the response is repentance. 
And that's it. And Ibn Atayla said when he heard that, he felt like this incredible uh, weight was taken from his shoulders. That's it. That is a Boolean algebraic formula for how to live in this world. You're in one of those four states. And so just be blessed. Now, one of the things... He goes on, I mean, this is something amazing. Imam al-Junaid, who uh, is one of the great, and again, Ibn, At- Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, rahimahullah, all of the scholars recognized Imam al-Junaid. All of them. Nobody said, you know, this uh, Imam al-Junaid. All of them. But he, Imam al-Junaid, in uh, the Risala of Imam al-Qushayri, you know, they mention a story that Imam al-Junaid said, Kuntu na'iman inda sari. That was his uncle, Sari al Sakati. He was a, you know, Sakati is like a, um, he was, he had a junkyard. And so he sold like uh, from a, a junkyard. That's, that was his and, uh, it was halal job. It's amazing, right? The, I mean, the best food is from jobs that are halal. And, and every job that's halal is dignified. We don't, Nabi Allah Dawood, can yakuru min kasbi yadihi. He was, he was actually a, a smith, so he, he was doing something that was uh, labor. I mean, one of the things about our culture is it denigrates labor, you know, which is really sad because labor like carpenters and tailors and people that do these type of, these are some of the most halal jobs now in the world. They're, and you know, nobody should ever denigrate these type of jobs because they're actually very, very um, uh, valuable for uh, a society. But anyway... S- s- he, he woke him up, he was sleeping, and he woke him up. He said, Qali, ya Junaid, anni li. He's telling him a vision that he saw. It's as if I was standing before God. He, he had a dream. And he said, and God said to me, I, al-khalqa, I created creation, and all of them claim to love me. فَخَلَقْتُ الدُّنْيَا فَهَرَبَ مِنِّي تِسْعَةُ عَشَارِهِمْ And then I created the world and nine-tenths of them fled. وَبَقِي مَعِيَ الْعُشَرِ And only one-tenth remained. فَخَلَقْتُ الْجَنَّةَ فَهَرَبَ مِنِّي تِسْعَةُ عَشَارِ الْعُشَرِ And then nine-tenths of that tenth fled because I created paradise. And so now only one percent is left. وَبَقِيَ مَعِيَ الْعُشَرِ الْعُشَرِ فصلت عليهم ذرة من البلاء فهرب مني تسعة عشر عشر العشر and then I sent upon them an atom's weight of tribulation and nine tenths of that one tenth of that one tenth left me now you're literally down down at at just point one فقلت للباقين معي لا دنيا أردتم you don't want دنيا ولا الجنة طربتم and you don't want جنة ولا من النار هربتم and you don't flee from the fire ولا من البلاء فرتم and you're not fleeing from tribulation فماذا تريدون what do you want قالوا أنت تعلم ما نريد you know what we want فقلت لهم إني مسلط عليكم من البلاء بعدد أنفاسكم ما لا تقوم له الجبال الرواسي أتصبرون I am going to subject you to tribulation with the number of your breasts. And, and even the, mount, the high, high mountains uh, could not stand it. Will you show patience? If you're the one sending the trial, then do what you want. Those are my true servants. I mean, this is a dream that one of the Salihin saw, but it's, it's a remarkable uh, dream. And, and so here it is that the Prophet ﷺ was told us when he was asked, who are the people that have the greatest tribulation? Su'ila Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which people have the greatest tribulation in the world? Faqala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu said, al-anbiya, thumma al-amthalu fal-amthal, first the prophets and then those closest to the prophets and then those closest to them. Yubtala nas ala qadri dinihim, People will have tribulations based upon 
the, the degree of their faith, their religion, their deen. فَمَنْ ثَخُونَ دِينُهُ اشْتَدَّ بَلَاؤُهُ The ones whose deen is very strong, their religion is strong, they will have اشْتَدَّ بَلَاؤُهُ they, they will have great difficulties. وَمَنْ ضَعُفَ دِينُهُ ضَعُفَ بَلَاؤُهُ And those who have weak religion, they will have weak tribulations. وَإِنَّ الرَّجُلَ لَيُصِيبُهُ لَيُصِيبُهُ الْبَلَاؤُ حَتَّى يَمْشِي عَلَى الْأَرْضِ وَمَا عَلَيْهِ خَطِيئَةً There will be people who have so much trial that they will be walking on the earth without any sin. This is a sahih hadith. So this is it. Now, even more extraordinary is that the Prophet ﷺ told us that on the day of judgment, there will be the people of Afia who had well-being in this world when they see the rewards. This is in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad. When they see the rewards of the people of tribulation in this dunya who had great suffering and difficulty, they will wish that they were flayed alive in the dunya. Their skin. تُقْرَضُ جُلُودُهُمْ بِالْمَجْهَرِيقِ the, the Prophet ﷺ said that their skin was flayed alive, cut from them. In the, that's what they would hope in the dunya. And this is, people don't realize this. This is a difficult thing. Now, do we want suffering? No. The Prophet ﷺ said, And he went by some people in great tribulation and suffering, and he said, Didn't they ask for, the, for well-being? And this is why, these are the du'as that we say every day, every morning, and every evening. Why? Because these are the du'as of asking Allah for well-being. So it's not like we want suffering. But when suffering comes, see who the one who sent the suffering. Why did he do it? The Prophet ﷺ said that there are people that سَبَقَتْ لَهُمْ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ مَنْزِلَةً That there, were, there are people that have a station in the in in the dunya, like they have a station with Allah, lam biamali, but but that person did not reach the station with their actions. In other words, what Allah wanted from them, they did not give to Allah. Fabtalahum, so then he tries them, so he will abtalahu fi jasadihi wa fi malihi wa fi waradihi hatta yablugha manziratuhu and Allah until he achieves. The station that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he shows patience. I, Imam al-Ghazali said that there are people who their sins will only be removed by depression. Like literally, Allah will give them sadness and grief. And this, this is the removal of their sins. This is an abode of huzn. What, it, when, look at the description of the Prophet. Kana da'im al he was constantly in a state of huzn, but he was also in a state of joy with Allah. So this, these are not paradoxes. These are understanding the nature of the abode. When you see the world, you can't go now on the internet without seeing things about Yemen. How could you not cry? Or Palestine, or Syria, or Iraq. I mean, how many tears have been shed by our community over just looking at the tribulation around the world? But you, what you need to understand is Maybe those people aren't fulfilling what Allah expected from them as people of the Prophet Muhammad's ummah. And maybe he's removing all of their sins in this world. I mean, I saw three women on CNN that, from Syria, and they were literally crossing into Turkey, fleeing the, the crises. And I just <laughs> completely floored me. You know, this, the, the person, that, the, the reporter just said to this person, you know, what do you, what do you think? What do you think about this situation? And she just looked at me and she said, Allah mawjood. Allah exists. That's a believer's response. You know, so on the on Yom Qiyamah, what, what maqam does that person have? Because that's patience. I mean, all these Muslims have gone through all these things. We've been through this before. I hear people saying, oh, you know, people, I'm losing my faith. There's people in America, Muslims, that are losing their faith because of what's happening in Yemen. What, like, what, what does that mean? Look at the people of Yemen. Like, they're calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the difference. It's amazing. Don't lose your akhirah because of somebody else's 
losing their dunya. I mean, we're people of Akhir, we're not people of dunya. This abode is what it is. And it's a zero-sum game, it always has been. You know, some areas get better, other areas get worse, but it stays dunya. And we've had a long run, those of us who are over here, we've had a long run of blessings. So uh, I see dark clouds on the horizon. I'm not a negative person, but I see dark clouds on the horizon. People should be doing spiritual exercises to get ready for what's coming because you don't want to lose your faith just because everything falls apart and things fall apart. I mean, World War II, my goodness. Like, I don't know. People should be grateful. That's my feeling. Like my advice to myself and everybody else is just be grateful. Alhamdulillah wa shukrillah. Stop complaining all the time. Everybody's just, it's just amazing, the, the complaints. So this is it. In order for him uh, to mitigate the pain of your tribulation, he gave you knowledge that he was the one trying you. Liyabluukum. So may Allah make us people of patience and gratitude. Even better is to be gr- grateful all of the time because the, the arifin, the people that know Allah, are grateful even in their tribulations. Because Ibn Abbas said, in every tribulation, know that there are three blessings hidden that you have to see. The first is it could have been worse. You lost a child, you could have lost all your children. You lost a hand, you could have lost both hands. So, and then know that it's, it's in your dunya, like it's, it's in your worldly things and not in your religious matters. So if you lose money, like you use the stock market collapse and you lost all your money, just alhamdulillah, it's just dunya. And then the last one, it's in this world and not the next world. So... On the Yom Qiyamah, maybe you're going to say, I wish I had more tribulation, like those people that see the people in tribulation getting all their rewards, saying, I wish I had more tribulation. Don't wish for more tribulation. Just ask Allah for afiyah and for well-being. But know that if tribulation comes to you, it's probably because you're closer to Allah than other people. And, and just be grateful, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah.